YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be Shop for another project video. Last couple weeks we've been putting out videos on this jet scooter and parts for that. Been working on this Tormach 1100 MX, working on Fusion 360 and seeing that all come together. And uh, this week we are finally going to get to making some knife parts, which is the main reason that I ended up purchasing this CNC mill behind me. So that's what we're going to get into today is go through the Fusion 360 design, taking the the prototype that I made and digitizing that, so to speak, and getting that into Fusion 360. And then we're gonna work on really some a little bit more complex coding and G-code as we go ahead and get that all set to run parts here on this Tormach 1100 MX. So for those of you subscribed to the channel, sure appreciate you watching this journey I'm on here as I make some knives and go from this uh, patent here into production. If you're new to the channel, now's a great time. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you get the alert when that next video comes out. So with that, hey, let's take a look at the computer. Let's look a little bit at this design and then we're going to come down here and we're going to start making some chips and cutting out some parts. Let's go. Since the next several videos is going to be all about talking about this triple BS knife lock and actually going through a series of videos to make the parts for it and build out a complete knife, thought it'd be worth spending a few minutes to talk through this actual triple BS lock mechanism, take a look at what's under the hood and get an idea of exactly what parts we are making. So this is my proof of concept fusion design right here. This was over a year ago that I put this together in fusion, about all I could do at that time was easy rectangles wasn't really giving the knife any shape, but it worked great. I got through my proof of concept, was able to get through the design. So we'll take a look at this. And then I do have a couple of functioning prototypes. We'll take a look at those here in a moment as well. And again, just get kind of an idea of what this next series of videos is going to be about. This area right here is going to be the lock mechanism. Why did I call it a triple BS? Well, the company name that I've gone with is Blades to Be with two Bs in it for Bud Beats. And I call this the Bud Beats Ball Slide. You'll see why when we get into it that you've got a ball mechanism and a sliding pin. So I thought that three B's in Bud Beats ball slide went with triple BS. Seemed like it was a good catchy name and what the heck, I get to invent it, I get to name it. So that's what I came up with for this. Hopefully you like the name. Hey, leave a comment if you've got different ideas for it. Triple BS is what I went with. So what does a triple BS mechanism look like when we get under the hood? Let's take a look here. All right, as we get this first cover off, we've got just a, a cover. This is actually screwed in place, as you'll see in the uh, updated drawings and in the, uh, the actual prototype design. So we've got a cover plate, we've got a thumb stud, we've got this sliding pin, which is a half round pin with a ball nose. We've got a ball underneath and a spring under there. And basically that moves back and forth, pushes the ball into different size detents in there and locks it in place. Let's let this open up the rest of the way. See when this is opened up, when the blade is in the closed position, you basically end up with the ball in a smaller detent, though it doesn't allow that pin to slide forward very far. So you've got ball bearing on a ball nose on this pin, and that ball on ball motion actually allows the blade to push this pin back out of the way, overcome that spring detent resistance, and let the blade open up. So it's a flipper design, and you're able to open the knife without having to manipulate the thumb studs on either side to get that to open. Then once the blade opens up, then the ball drops into that larger detent and you can see that the pin comes all the way forward, locks that ball in place, and that pin actually gets wedged between the ball and between this cover plate right here. So there is no place for that ball to go, locks the blade in the open position, and this exact same mechanism is happening here on the other side of the blade. So then you need to grab both of these thumb studs, one on each side of the knife, pull that back, and that's gonna release the blade and allow it to swing closed drops back into that smaller detent and you're back in the closed position. So there are plenty of knife mechanisms out there that use some form of a ball and a spring detent to keep the blade in the closed position. But this is to my knowledge and to the patent office's knowledge, the only one that is using this spring ball detent kind of combination to lock the blade in the open position. So that is essentially what's going on under the hood on this triple BS knife mechanism. You can see that we've got a ball, we've got a slide, hence the name the Bud Beats Ball Slide, making this thing operate and uh, work into the open and closed locked position. So let's take a look at a couple of prototypes here. So what we've got on the bench is we've got two different designs. 
Got one that has this more cleaver type blade, pretty popular right now. And the one we're gonna focus on in today's video is more this harpoon style drop point blade. In these prototypes, I'm just used aluminum handle slabs and I just hand ground all of these to shape, you know, machined all of these on a manual milling machine. So essentially now that I wanna work these on a Tormach CNC machine, I've got to what I call digitize all of these pieces completely in fusion so that I can send that design over to the machine. So that's that's what we're going to work on today is digitizing this handle slab, working on the blade. We're just going to work on the mechanical aspects of the blade. And at some point in a future video, then we'll go through and we'll digitize and make a second run of this cleaver design as well. But right now we're going to focus on this drop point and you can see in here, this is where the ball mechanism is. You know, it really does operate exactly like what you saw in that proof of concept fusion design, even though that's just a little more rectangular, all these pieces and parts are the same. There's that small little pin on the back side of the cover and you can see some of the pieces that are apart. It has a lock mechanism on both sides. They are independent of each other so you do have to pull both of those back at the same time and when you pull them both back the blade is going to release. There's just a little bit of tension on that blade as it comes around and closes and then when it's in the closed position it does have a flipper and even though you need to pull those back in order to close the knife to open it you're able to overcome the tension on that and you can just see that that is able to move back by itself. So you don't have to pull on that to open it and it's a flipper and you can flip that open and again, release it and it will close hold itself in the closed position. Over the series of videos, I'm not sure how many videos it's going to take for us to go through the complete build out of this knife and uh, using the CNC machine, but uh, it may take a few different videos. But as we go along, I'll explain all of these different pieces and parts and sort of talk through what are the steps now that I've got a CNC machine, what am I going to do on the CNC machine? What am I still going to do potentially manually? And what am I still going to do by hand? You know, grinding these bevels, putting in my file cuts. Right now, I still plan to do all that by hand and I'll sort of talk through my file cut design and where that came from. So that is the plan for the next series of videos to go through this whole process and taking this from the proof of concept from prototype to patent and now going and trying to get this into a semi more production version of this knife using the CNC machine. So let's jump into Fusion. Let's see how we've uh, gone with digitizing this design and let's get ready to get down to the shop and make some chips and knock out some of these parts. All right, so looking in Fusion, first step is put this blade shape in there, completely digitized. That went pretty smooth, nothing too complicated in doing that. And what we're gonna focus on machining today is what I call the mechanical aspects of this blade. So we're gonna put in the pivot hole, these two different size detents, and we're gonna put in the pin stop half moon there. We'll get that in place, and we'll machine in these finger notches for the flipper and a little bit of this contour on the end of the blade. So that's what we're gonna focus on machining. The rest this profiling and working on that and the bevels that'll be in a future video so again this one pretty easy to get into fusion and then if we go look at the manufacturing aspect of that nothing too complex in here first we're going to just machine this contour to get that rounded end I want to make sure that that radius lines up with the radius we're putting on the blade and then we're gonna go drill a couple holes in there ream those out machine the bore in there you will notice that uh, first I was gonna drill and ream that the same as I was doing manually so we'll try that downstairs. Didn't like how that turned out, so ended up changing that. So we're going to actually just bore that on the on the CNC machine. I think that works out better. And then we're going to cut this pocket in here, drill out the last detent, and get that reamed. And then our second setup, we're going to go through and set up on the corner up here. And then we're going to just mill this on a 45. So all this extra material, that was the only way that I could figure out how to tell it how I was going to hold it or to turn it onto a 45 degree angle. Again, maybe easy easier ways to do that in Fusion, still learning. But overall, that worked out pretty simple, and we'll go down and we'll see how that machines and how this one comes out. So the blade, not too complex. Moving on to the handle slab, okay, we're gonna jump back a few different versions. If you're looking at what I have opened up here, you can see that I definitely have several versions open. This slowed me down a little bit. This is the most complex piece that I've made in Fusion so far with all these contours and curves. Not only that, but when I make the piece by hand, I'm not following an actual 
actual design. I'm not following a print, so I'm just making up all these contours and curves as I go along, but I got it to the shape that I like, so it took me a while to digitize that, measure everything, and get it set up. The holes, the mechanism, I knew where all those holes needed to be, but this whole outer shape uh, took me a little while. I will say that uh, if you watch my video on the jet scooter, I did something similar here where I did take a photograph of my handle slab and I imported that photograph, and that did help quite a bit with getting around this geometry and getting it pretty close. And then I just kind of tweaked and adjusted from there. Overall, was happy with this design and it built it out in Fusion fairly quickly. But you may notice that what I've got on here is I end up with a couple of little extra bits of material that aren't supposed to be there. One on the end, I've got one here, you know, you can see it on the mirror image, you can see it in both spots. And then there's one other piece, rotate the model a little bit so we're able to see it. And it's right up here, a little bit harder to see, but along this, what's called a loft in Fusion, end up with another little piece along that edge. And it just didn't cut it cleanly through there. When I went to try to do the cam aspect of this, the manufacturing, realized that Fusion understands that these little pieces are here and it's trying to machine around those. And it was leaving big islands of material trying to machine around and leave these little bits. So obviously that wasn't going to work. Did a little bit of reading and it was not a lot of information on how to clean out little bits in Fusion. Maybe I wasn't Googling the right aspect, but eventually I did finally come up with a design and I got rid of those little bits. On the sweeps, it wasn't too bad. I was able to go in there and just you know, with a couple thou, adjust my, my sketch on there off the edges and fairly quickly, probably only a couple hours it took me to clean up those, the little bit on the end and the little bit down here. So that wasn't too bad. It took me about another six to seven hours to figure out how to clean up this loft. Finally had to learn how to do an offset plane up in this area and then do a projection down onto this curved surface, but not just a closest point projection, had to figure out how to do a vector projection, which now that I've done it, God, it seems really easy. No idea why it took me seven hours to figure it out. But you know, you watch some YouTube videos and you think and learn and process. Uh, eventually I got that done. So here was the design that I came up with and this is what we're gonna go machine first time. Got some radiuses in here, cleaned it up to where I thought it was pretty good. So then we went into the manufacturing aspect of this one. And again, a lot more learning. The initial piece, just drilling holes on the backside, that was pretty easy to, to cam out. And then drilling holes on this front side. Then we're gonna set up a jig and drill some holes in a jig to hold this piece and bolt it down. And then we got here into the 3D contouring piece. This got a little bit more complex, trying to understand and learn how to do 3D contouring. So I've got a first tool path going around just the outer edge, adaptive, quick roughing out most of the material. And then we're gonna clean that up a little bit more. And then we start to get into the contours. And you're gonna see all this extra, what I would call wasted tool paths because it's trying to follow these holes that are here. Uh, we're gonna come back up and we're gonna take a look at a adjusted, updated design of this. And I do eventually figure out how to get rid of some of those thanks to uh, the Titans of CNC forum on Facebook. Went, uh, posted my tool path out there, asked some questions and had a lot of folks help me understand what to do. Eventually put some patches in here to fill in those holes and allow it to machine over top. So we do get that cleaned up a lot more because especially this tool path, you can see how crazy busy that gets. But we're gonna go ahead and machine it this way one time and get a start on how this works. And then we'll come up and we'll take a look at the cleaned up design uh, before we make a second project here. So that's what this looked like. I also had a lot of learning trying to figure out how I was going to cut this piece out. On this first one, I thought, hey, I'll use the tabs feature, but in titanium with small bits, it really, it didn't like the bounce, moving up and down and plunging, and I broke a couple of bits doing that. Uh, some of that I've got on video when we go to machine it, some of it uh, not on video, but trust me, it was pretty challenging to get my speeds and feeds right going around the profile of this. The contouring, everything else, the speeds and feeds actually worked pretty well, but trying to figure out how to cut off this excess material, that slowed me down a little bit. Um, again, started with the tabs, we'll take a look at that one and then you'll see where I ended up on the last design and then we get the contour around the outer edge so that is going to be what we're going to head downstairs into the shop and we will uh, take a look at what we're going to do with the blade profiling and then get this first handle slab done last thing I want to show you before I go and do that I'm sure for anybody who uses fusion on a regular basis you're all very familiar with this setup sheet option that you have here but uh, I found it glad I did because 
wow, really makes it easy when you get down to the machine to figure out what it is you need for tooling. And if I'm going to make these parts now, make them again in three or four months, you know, you don't have to come up here to the computer to figure out how to configure your machine and get ready to do that. So here's what those setup sheets look like. Here's the setup sheet for the blade. You're able to determine what picture is going to be on this printout. And it's very easy to come down here and print these out. It shows you exactly where your XYZ is set up. So you know exactly where to probe your part, get that set up in the mill, shows you all the different tools tools that you have in your program to machine the part goes through gives you a description of those tools and then it walks through basically the operation of what each of those tools is going to do and then you can look at something a little bit more complex looking at the handle slab same thing it shows you where your xyz coordinates are where you're going to probe and especially with this handle slab the initial setup i'm doing it off of this corner of the piece out here and then for subsequent setups, I'm doing it off of that hole off the center of that bore that's in there. So it is nice to be able to have a visual reference to help you know where you're going to probe to. And again, gives you your list of tools, goes through, gives you that description. So really loving these setup sheets, makes for easy repeatability. And in my case, I'm going to make you know, probably 10 or 12 of these knives at a time. So I will be going back a month or two later and going through these same setups. And this paper printout is a great way to be able to do that. That's what we've got for this initial blade and our first handle slab. Let's head on down to the shop. Let's go start making some chips on these and see how they turn out. All right, so we followed our setup sheet. We've got it oriented in there. We made sure that we had tools number 21, 23, 26, 27, 29, 32, 34, and 35 loaded and ready to go. This is what we should be machining. So we've got the contour on the end, and then we've got the radius and the holes. That's a match too, contour on the end, radius and the holes. And we've got our piece loaded up in there and we've got it probed on that top back corner right there. So we should be set. Okay, so for the most part, I think it looks really good. I definitely like the crescent we cut in there. Holes look good. Somehow this quarter inch hole in the middle, it did not like the first end mill going through there. It was a little bouncy and uh, really left a rough finish on that. And even the reamer didn't go through and clean it up. So that one, honestly, I guess a quarter inch hole, I'm probably better off machining that a quarter inch. Maybe that would be a, a better way to do that instead of trying to ream it. You know, I programmed it the way I did it manually to stick with what I knew to start with to get going. But otherwise, everything else turned out pretty well. This will still be a, the bottom half of the hole feels pretty good. It's just definitely, it's definitely loose on there. So that's not, not something I could sell, not production worth. But maybe something I can still salvage for personal use will still give me an idea of the test fit, which is what I was going through with this first batch of everything. I'm trying to find gaps in the code, and we clearly found one. So I need to come up with a better way to put that quarter inch hole in there. But otherwise, the, uh, the rest of the op looks like it went pretty smooth. Let's get this out of here. Let's cut our little finger notches in the top section there. Then we'll be ready to come back and work on a handle sled.
Okay, this should be a fairly quick cycle. We've got this set up on a 45 degree angle. You can't really see it very well there in the drawing or in the block, but we're just using one tool. We're gonna go through, make some passes, cut the little notches on there. So only one tool loaded. So there's our piece. It was easy to probe the top and probe. So easy to probe Z and it was easy to probe Y. For X, couldn't really put the probe on that edge. So I just eyeballed it with the edge of the cutter. If these end up being a couple thou too deep or too shallow, that's gonna be fine. Way more accurate than when I was cutting them by hand. So I just used, uh, again, used it by eye to set up and zero in on X instead of trying to use the probe. So this should just quickly cut those notches out of there. See how it goes. All right, so obviously we just cut air because I set up X off the tip of a tool, finding the edge, but I need to go off the center of the tool. All right, let's try that again and we shouldn't be cutting air this time. Well, those look all right. They're maybe a little flatter than I would like. I think they could use a little bit more bite to them than that, but that definitely accomplished what we were trying to do. So there's blade closed, small hole, blade open, big hole up there. Just that quarter inch hole in there really kind of messed up this piece, unfortunately. Otherwise, this would be good to go so far. So I think I'm gonna go, before we go on to a handle slab, I'm gonna go tweak my code a little bit, see what's going on with that, see what happened there. Maybe I just had the, maybe I didn't, set the feed up right. So let's go see what happened with that and we'll run one more of these blades before we move on to a handle slab. All right, here we go with blade take number two. We're gonna go ahead and bore that quarter inch hole in there instead of ream it. The rest of it, we are gonna do the same. All right, I know that first cut on the corner is a little bit rough, so I'm gonna slow the feed way down for that initial hit and then after that, we'll let it run pretty much normal. Well, I thought it was cruising along just fine, so I turned the feed up a little bit and we snapped our cutter. But good news is that bore did just fine, so I think that that is a much better bore than we had last time. Yeah, now it's too tight of a fit. So we'll go up and tweak that code a little bit. We'll make that just a little bit plus for us. And of course, we'll get a new tool loaded in here. All right, it's gonna be snug, but I can at least start it in there, so that's gonna be good. It can be a tight fit on that. It only has to pivot on that inside piece. So that is definitely a much better fit than we had really it. The rest of the part looks good. So let's go ahead and cut our little finger bites on here, and then we're gonna move on to a handle slab. Bottom line is I've got my speeds are good. My feeds are a little bit too fast. So I pretty much cut them in about half. Uh, most of the drilling and the reaming, I think the feeds are good, but on my machining feeds, yeah, some of the recommendations out there are just a little bit too quick. So slowing those down by about half, I think will keep me from breaking some cutters. All right, I think I can eyeball my X right from there. I want to cut those a little deeper this time, so I want to go 7,000 deeper for my X. Since I didn't tweak the code, we'll adjust it for here. Okay, well, offsetting 7,000 on those made them pretty much pointy. Got rid of the flat almost completely, so I think we can offset maybe 5 or 6,000. We'll go with 5 next time, and I think that'll do better. But still, much easier than retweaking the entire drawing and uh, resending code. So we got a good looking blade blank coming up there now. All right, here we go for this handle slab. We're gonna do these inside holes on the handle slab. Only four tools, 23, 26, 33, and 35. Just drilling and reaming. So we've got 23, 26, 33, and 35 loaded in there. 
And we just probed that XYZ point back there on that corner. Got our program loaded and ready to run. Should be a fairly quick cycle on this one. There's where we probed that part, but this will be our first piece of titanium we're cutting in the Tormach. So here we go. Okay, well, two and a half minutes cycle time, two minutes, 37 seconds. So that part was good. Let's see how our, I can see a couple little lines in those green holes. Let me grab the bushing and see how they fit on those. Uh, the one eighth is a little looser than I'd like. It's a little bit loose, but what's going on with that 3 16 hole? What happened there? All right, well, clearly we just scrapped that piece of aluminum, or titanium. What in the heck happened there? Okay, so the, clearly the reamer never touched it, so what tool did I use to cut that weasy big with? Well, there we go. Yeah, so I called the wrong tool there, so that's why that hole is too big. Well, that's a bummer. Well, let's get another one in here, and let's go fix our code, and let's get it right. I'm wondering if I shouldn't just let it bore that one out like I did the other one. Right, I think I like the drill and ream fit on these 1 8 That's going to be fine. But yes, I think I'm going to go ahead and go get it to bore that one. And let's see how that does. Here we go with number two. We're going to try to bore that hole this time instead of reaming it. The rest of it left the same. Let's prove our part. getting a little better fit on there that time. That first one got a little bit of marks on it, and then this one. All right, I think I need to go back and tweak that. That's gonna be a little too tight. So let me make, I made it plus one so that it wouldn't be a total tight fit, but let me go make that just a little bigger or else we'll be struggling for assembly on this. Let me go tweak that, be right back. Okay, we're just gonna run that bore again. Maybe I didn't do the depth right on that second time around. So it's going to be counterboard from the other side. And I think I didn't set the depth to go all the way through on there. So it goes in the top part fine. I think we should be in good shape with that. All right, we should be ready to flip this over. Put all our counterbores, do some machining in here. So we've got a few steps to go on this side for sure. Now let's check what we need for tools. We'll get it set up. Okay, we're going to do the other side. This is the junk piece. I figure we already junked it on the other side. We may as well just go ahead and cut it over here in case we make any more mistakes. We'll just keep junking the same piece. Uh, for this setup, we're actually going to go Z off the top. We're going to line up off of this bore since that is our critical feature. Make sure everything else stays lined up with that. So we're going to line up off of the bore this time. So that's why I went ahead and put this back on here to show that being probed. Uh, we loaded a couple more tools. So I set my offset to G55. Use my tool setter on the back of the vise. I have now reset my offset to G54 back to my workpiece. We'll reprobe off the center. Uh, like I say, we got a couple of new tools put together in there for a center drill and a drill bit to drill some holes. And we should be pretty much set. So let's probe that for X and yeah, X and Y off of there, Z off the top, and we'll be ready to run. Really easy to find the center of the bore with that Heimer. You probe the back side, zero the axis, probe to the other side, and just hit divide by two right in the software. It finds the center. Trick is just do it three times to make sure you really find the center of the bore. All right, so now we're doing these holes on the outside, mostly just counter bores. So we're gonna counter bore the screw holes that we put through there and the center hole. And then we do need to go in and cut a 3 8 groove and a 1 8 slot in there. And then we're gonna drill some 
256 holes and put the little counter bore on the top of those. So that's the operations. Only taking a total of five tools. We got 22, 24, 26, 50, and 51. So we just added 50 and 51. We've been using those. So we got 22, 24, 26 up in there. And we just added 50 and 51, a center drill and a drill bit. So we go to our main, we've got our piece loaded and we just probed off of the bore. So we just probed this bore right here. So that's the first counter bore counterboard those screw holes and then cut our slots. We should be set and ready to run. I don't need to tweak that one, but I will make that, I think, just a hair bigger so that those aren't so tight in the future. Well, overall, that was a successful cycle. I'm going to go double check the depth on that groove and make sure that I'm happy with where that ended up. I believe our counter bores, everything looks like they're nice and centered and lined up. So other than, you know, that 3 16th hole that's supposed to be there being too big, the rest of this looks good and functional. So I think we should be in good shape here. Maybe I'll take that blade that we wrecked earlier. Or maybe we'll just make a stubby little pocket knife or something out of our leftover bits of what we scrap here. Got to use it for something. But yes, I would say we're in good shape. I'm going to go, uh, same thing. I slowed the feeds down. I was running about 50%. Um, ended up at four inches a minute on that bigger slot and back to three and a half inches per minute on that small slot. That seemed to be where it sounded good and was cutting nice. So I'm gonna go up and tweak that in the program and resend the code so that I can ultimately run it at, you know, 100% and have it running where it's supposed to be. Well, there's titanium on the Tormach. Seems to be cutting it just fine. Looks good. Now we've also got a scrap piece here. I guess I won't be able to make a stubby because I'm gonna use this scrap piece to do my practice run on my contours, so. We will be uh, checking those here in a little bit. We'll see how that overall outside contour comes out. So this will give us a good scrap piece to try that with as well. That's our next op. But first, let's go ahead and rerun the code on this one. And we will cut this piece while we've got all those tools set up and in there right now. All right, here we go on our titanium take two. Tweaked the code a little bit, made a little adjustment on the... I noticed that that small slot, it didn't cut the full width. It didn't take the finish cut, so I had to go down to a smaller tool, which actually I need to check if... Yep, I have tool 27 loaded, so we should be all set with the, the other tool that we need. Didn't like the width of that tool, I guess, so it didn't want to go ahead and, and didn't give it enough room to finish it. We're back to our proper work offset. Let me double check what is tool number 27. Coach to be loaded. Let me tell it, I've got the probe out, so we're at tool zero. Okay, so same thing, we're dialed in on that bore again. Z on the top side, and should cut pretty much like the last one, only I'm gonna run it at 100% on the feed rate because I tweaked the speeds and feeds in the code. So now it should be ready to run the whole thing at 100%. Let's give it a go. All right, I could tell on that last one that those holes were getting rough on the backside. I should have changed out that drill bit and I did not. So it broke on that last hole. Not too surprised about that, to be honest. Those are really cheap drill bits. Need to buy some better tap drills for those 256. But I should be able to come back from the backside and get that piece out of there. So we will work on that on another time. But for right now, that was pretty much the end of the cycle. We should have a little bit more clearance on that hole this time. Still pretty snug fit. I want to be fighting with these parts, we need to tweak that just a little bigger as well. Yeah, let's see how we did on the bottom slot this time. Okay, it is still, it is not machining that slot the right size. And I do definitely want to clean that one up, so let me go check this again, see what's going on with that before we pull that out of here. 
All right, so I ran it again, and I'm still struggling with that one-eighth slot there. I even made it a couple thou wider, and you can even see a little bit on the, you can still see the edge of the hole on the top and the bottom. It's keeping it really well centered. It's just not quite making it, a, it's, it's right at an eighth now. I mean, I found a one-eighth rod, and I can just barely slide it through there, so it's, I made it 126 and it should have cut an extra thou clearance so it should have cut at 127 and it's just a little snug still so we'll have to make that a plus one another plus one thou but otherwise i think we're good we got the broken drill bit but you know we'll just mark that on the back side and we'll punch through that hole and get rid of that here in a second so let me set up the the jig piece now and then we'll put our other scrap one in and we'll see if uh, we can cut some contours and see what that's going to look like all right, so for this one, I've just got a piece of aluminum plate in here. This is going to be my jig to hold that handle slab while I try to cut the contours. I'm just going to line up on that dot. I can be plus or minus pretty much a quarter of an inch on that dot uh, just to make sure I've got clearance to bolt this down. But I am going to get a good accurate Z height. So just going to probe that really quick, get lined up on that dot. And we're going to drill and ream the three bolt holes back here and bore out that 3 16 hole right there and get our piece bolted down. So there's our jig. Made quick work of that in the aluminum. So we're gonna put our standoffs in there. We'll screw those in place. There's a pretty good fit on those reamed holes. And bolt our piece down and try cutting some contours. All right, so there we go. I've got it bolted onto that jig plate. Got it bolted four different places. Should be in good shape there. Give it a try and we will see what happens. And we're already still zeroed in on X and Y on there. I just need to go in and readjust Z for the height on this piece, but we should have X and Y already locked in on that part. We're making nice parts now. It seems to be doing all right in that titanium with that hole down. See what kind of tool life we get. I guess that'll be our real determination of got the recipe right or not. The bar's cutting all right. Still cruising around there. Cut still sounds the same. We'll be getting ready to pop up and come back around the other side here now. Making its way all the way around now. Stepped up, moved in. So it's on the next step up there now. Clearly the step overs are too big, you can see them, but getting rid of some material and once we get that quarter, or sorry, once we go down to the eighth inch, we should clean those contours up a lot more than that. Well, there's how the quarter inch ball did. So it worked its way around there quite a bit. Now we're gonna put in the 1 8 ball and not quite finish it. I didn't go all the way through, but we'll run this and then I'll see where I need to tweak the code before I run the final pass and go cut through and leave some tabs to cut it out. Well, that is as far as my code got me so far. So still a little ridgy, obviously. I'm not all the way through yet. So I need to work on my contours. I need to probably read a little more, really think about what do I want that step over to be on that ball end mill to give a nice finish down that contour. So I've got a little bit of work to do to set up that final finish pass, but um, bottom line is I'm liking how the profile turned out. I'm liking how it's following the, the line. So the design aspect of it, I think I'm pretty happy with. So I will tweak the code and finish this piece before I pull it out. And then we'll try to cut that second sample get everything working and then we'll move over to the left hand side and repeat all this stuff again get one together then we can start cranking out some volume but i am pretty happy with how that progress went for today so let's run some more code we'll get out here and we'll finish cutting this one well, it's really moving on the contours now but it has been a challenge to get this far into the program 3d machining lots to learn about these tool paths and contours and I cut some tabs on there but then as you machine the tabs things flex we've broken a few cutters to get to this point but we are finally about to finish this first sample part I actually didn't break any ball nose end mills doing the contouring I broke all the end mills going around the profile so just regular flat end mills 
But yeah, I was just trying to profile and was going from thick to thin and that's where I was popping them. Good learning. Well, there we have it. There is the first 3D contoured part off of this Tormach. I will not try to claim that that is the most efficient tool path. I couldn't figure out how to get it to ignore these three holes so it wouldn't just zip all the way around in a circle. It kept coming around, it would jump. And so lots of movement over those holes. You can see on that tool path right there, it's all these blue lines are jumping back and forth. So that was not super efficient, but that finish, I did actually leave enough on there. I thought maybe I hadn't left enough on the roughing passes. I set it up this last time around to make sure it leaves 10 thou, make sure we're really taking a cut off of there. But oh God, that feels amazing. Uh, that is definitely what I am looking for. I will call that success right there. All right, so after I pulled that first test piece off the mill, you know, we do know we've got a couple of errors in it. Obviously, we got a bore that's too big and some other things, but it's still been a great test piece, great learning piece to go through. So after I can visually see that, I didn't like how I had uh, didn't have enough radius up here on these two corners, needed to add to that. Also realized that I could come in and bevel these edges a little bit more and just clean up this sweep around the corner right here, clean up this bevel. So a few places that I could tweak it and also tweak this radius up in here. So a few places to make adjustments. And the main thing was really wanted to clean up that tool path by talking to the Facebook group on Titans of CNC. Found out I can put patches in here to cover up these holes. If you haven't done patches before, you just go up here into surface and this is where you can add a patch to your model. So added those patches and that really cleaned up the tool path. We're gonna take a look at those in a moment. But the main thing was we cleaned up these radiuses on here and got that where we needed it to be. So now we're gonna go manufacture this piece. So the setup on the backside, drilling the holes, really no change there. Not much change in the, the holes or anything on this front side. I was struggling with this slot. It just seemed to be getting some flex or it was just a little bit tighter than I wanted. So I finally ended up going with a 1 8 end mill and just running that slot straight down with a 1 8 end mill so that I know it is the width that I need. And I also cleaned up a little bit on this slot right here to make sure that I was going to have no issues with a uh, cover plates fitting in there. Those cover plates are water jet cut, so they've got, uh, you know, plus or minus a, a thou or so variability. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to have trouble with those sticking. So tweak that till I got it where I was comfortable. But otherwise, no real difference in the machining process. The biggest changes came down here in the 3D profile. So that adaptive, that's still looking pretty close to the same. This contour, by changing the radius and by adjusting which faces I'm going to machine, you will notice that that now goes all the way around the edge. And then the main piece was in the this contour right here and going all the way around and how I didn't use the tabs to cut this out went and contoured that to get rid of this excess material and I forgot one step the other big change in this design was adding this bevel on the backside to make sure I broke that edge all around the backside so that when this knife goes together you're not gonna have this sharp edge between the two handle slabs so I made that change in the design so that did actually make a change in the manufacturing so now so up here in this first step, I'm gonna go around and we're gonna contour around there. And then I'm going to do a chamfer cut all around there from the backside. So I'm going down about 35 thou to do that. And then when we come to this back to the front side, then I'm contouring around with a little bit larger end mill going all the way through. I leave about 10 thou of material and then I'm going to cut through with a 1 16th end mill and break all the way through, clean up around that edge. And then this excess material falls off. I found that work worked much better than the tabs. Didn't break any end mills, ended up with a good machining process for that. Other big piece you can see on these contours by putting the patches in there. A much cleaner tool path around here. Still have some bouncing back and forth right here, but we don't have the hundreds of bounces back and forth across those holes. So those patches really helped clean up the tool paths back in here. And then we end up with, I felt like I had a little bit of flex maybe on there. So I took a, a larger end mill and I do one last profile cut around there just to make sure that you know, I've really cleaned this up all the way to the very edge of that contour. So this is the, the redo of this piece. Let's head on back down to the machine and let's see how we do this second time around. So here is a rerun on that same handle slab. Went in and worked on this contour right here and a little bit up on the top. Wanted a little more radius to get rid of that edge. And I think that blended in there really nice. And also this was a recut. So recut on the same part and good repeatability. 
that really was only cutting around this corner. I put a little bit of bevel on these two edges right here. So rerunning that same part, good repeatability, and I had even taken this off and bolted it back down onto my jig. So that part looked good, and you can see a little bit of a contour now on that front piece. So I think that cleaned up nicely. I like this design. I like this shape a little bit. All right, now that I am happy with the code, I think I've got a good program where we aren't gonna break cutters. Let's get back in there and start with this one. But before we put this on, I'm actually going to, even though it's already cut on the bottom, I'm gonna rerun the bottom. I'm gonna do a profile cut around the contour and I'm gonna do a bevel on it to make sure we've got a nice bevel on that back edge. Then we'll put the jig back in. We'll bolt it back onto the jig and we will set it up. So let's test our repeatability of being able to line this up on the backside and get a good profile cut. Uh, but I think we pretty much have the code down now for the blade and for this right side handle. Once we get this cut, then it'll be time to go hit the computer again and uh, just do a duplicate, repeat all this programming for the left side of the handle. And we should be just about ready to get into production. For the second time around, here we go with that profiling on the bottom side, put a nice chamfer on there. And once we flip this over, we'll see how close that lines up and does on the contour. In the future, I will do this step when I'm drilling these holes in from the bottom. It'll just be set up to run this contour, run this chamfer, and then when we flip it over, we'll contour around and cut all the way through to get rid of the excess before we finish the, uh, the full contours on the handle. But that worked out pretty well. Let's get it flipped back over and back on the jig. Okay, this is the one. We've got this one cut and or profiled and beveled on the back side. Finished on this front side, we've got it back on the jig. And the goal is to get through this full contour program here without breaking any cutters and just really check that we've got our recipe all good. So we're not gonna do tabs this time. We're just gonna contour through and then go back with that 16th cutter to get rid of all this extra material around here. So let's see how she does. Let's see if we can make it through this entire operation without breaking in a cutter. Well, we are two minutes in. Looking good. Doing this initial roughing around the edge. There's what we're doing so far. Okay, we finished the 3D adaptive. Now we're on the 3D contouring with still the quarter inch in there. So let's take out the large end mill. Still looking good. We've got that one eighth. It's working its way up towards the top of the part, contouring around there. Pretty clean looking cool tool path. And we are about 28 minutes in. All right, so this is where I had trouble last time going around this contour, and I'm actually just going to cut through and separate this piece from all that excess. I tried using tabs, it didn't like that. I was having some feed issues going around the corners. Uh, bottom line, I was just feeding too fast, breaking cutters. So this time I'm feeding really conservative, probably slower than I need to, but uh, it's cutting well. The majority of the cut right now is occurring up on the top section where it's already gone through. It's really just going to be this next time around where it's going to take the last 40 thou and do that. And it should leave just about 10 thou connecting those extra pieces on the bottom of the top there, and then I'm going to go around with a 1 cutter and separate those. And again, I don't have tabs, so it's just going to cut those pieces free. I'm hoping they don't spring in and snap that 1 cutter. We'll see how that goes, but I just can't come up with a better way to do that uh, and get rid of that excess. So we'll see what happens on the next door. So there should just be 10 thou in there holding those pieces on, and the 16th cutter is going to go in there and get rid of that right. Hey, okay, you should be just cutting through. Now when it comes around that rest of this curve, that front piece should get blasted off of there by the coolant if everything goes as planned. See if I got my depth of cut set correctly here. Let's see what happens. And there it goes. All right, got that piece clear. Let's see how it does around the backside. 
and I've got it set for an M01 tool break after this. So before it goes in there to cut those other contours, we'll be able to get in there and get those pieces out of the way. It didn't spit out of the way from the coolant, but a cutter didn't get snapped off either. Let's take a look. So we didn't use tabs and we cleanly got rid of those pieces that worked all right. We should have a nicely profiled piece. We have pretty even steps. So on this finished cut, it should be taken a pretty even amount. Should have 10 thou left to take off there. Our contour's done, it's beveled on the bottom side. So just this long cut now as it goes around to clean that up and then we'll have a finished piece here. All right, but this last, it's gonna be cruising along at 30 inches per minute as it goes around all these contours. So it's taken us an hour to get to this point. And now it's gonna zip around and it takes about another 26 minutes to finish this piece up. And I did notice in there that I do have a little bit of a step on the bottom. I noticed that on the other, the first kind of test piece too. So I think maybe that little 160 end mill when I try to cut around the contour, some maybe it flexes too much. So I'm gonna try and do a, a finished contour or something, you know, one of the earlier roughing passes puts a little step in there. So I need to do a finished contour with a larger tool and see if that cleans it up. So we'll plan to do that after this gets done. All right, here we can see this cruising around now with its three thou step over. So right now we've got our Z height at negative 1375. Should come around and it should drop that down to negative 1345. I guess I've got two and a half thou step over, not three, sorry. So changed it by two and a half thou. Updated this G code so many times, can't keep track of what it's all doing here. Yep, there we go, two and a half thou step over, so just keeps doing laps around there, moving up two and a half thou at a time. All right, I know you can't see down in there very well with all the coolant, but there's a pretty good step on there where it's coming around. But you can just hear that it's a nice tool path. It's following the contours. I've got smoothing on, it's not jerking around a lot. It is skipping over those three holes, so now it's doing a nice job. It messes out around the backside there, that's where it does all its jumping. But smooth tool path other than that. There it is. There is our finished usable. This one does not have any errors in it piece. This one's gonna be on a knife soon. So I do still have this noticeable little step right here. I can just catch my fingernail on it. I did a quick measurement across this width. It's supposed to be 118. I'm measuring about 124, so I'm getting about an extra five or six thou. So I think it's flex off of that little tool bit. I am gonna go run upstairs and just set up a contour around here, use a larger tool bit, and see if we can't clean up that last couple thou aside and get rid of that little bit of a step. So I'm gonna go run up and do that. We'll come down and cut that last contour, and then we'll pull this off and see how it looks. So this should be nice and beveled on the backside and completely finished out. All right, I ran that 5 16ths around there and I, can, I can't really see the line like I could before. I can just barely still feel the catch, but especially in this corner, it was really visible. You could see it. So that fixed it. Uh, it could just be user error. Just been leaving the stock to lead box unchecked. So when I checked that box, I went ahead this time I checked it and made sure I put it down to zero. Maybe by default it wants to leave a little bit on there or something, but this time I made sure it was zero. Seems good. Let's get that off our jig and let's take a closer look at this part. Well, there it is. Our handle slab is complete. We've got a nice fit on this piece, drop in there. I mean, virtually no play at all. So our little cover fits on there nice. Got this nice bevel down here on the backside. 
nice broken edge, nice deburred all the way. And even from flipping this piece over, just have a little bit of a mark there where I cut through from, cut through from one side and picked up on this side and then where our contour ends and goes into the flat, just barely feel anything. So I'm sure a scotch bright wheel is gonna take that out as we polish this up a little bit and get it ready to go. But right off the machine, I would say we're doing very, very well. This radius, we didn't get that on our test piece. It wasn't cutting properly, but that's in there now. So we've got a nice little added contour right there. And this all blends, just blends really well. Feels amazing. Just really can't feel any of the machining marks down that contour, so I'm very happy with that step over. So now we just need to go repeat that for our left-hand side. Get a couple of holes tapped in here. Obviously, we still have lots of steps left to go to make a complete knife, but that's going to be a wrap for this video as we got our Tormach set up and we started to get some of our 3D contours complete. Got the blades set up, we got the holes in our handle slabs set up, and we've got our outside contours on our handle slabs ready to go. One step closer to making some folders. Appreciate you watching. Well, YouTube, that's a wrap on another project video here in the Blades to Be Shop. I hope you enjoyed watching as we started to take some knife parts and go from this prototype, hand-finished, handmade piece, digitize that in Fusion 360, and then come down here and cut some parts. I know we're a long way from finishing a knife, but I feel like we made some great headway today. We got the, uh, the programming and everything in for the blade, and we got the programming and everything in to make a handle slab, which really is the, the more complex piece on this to make. So we got the right side completely done. Now I've got a, a model to follow to go ahead and get that left side program. Hey, overall, I think we did not too bad. We only broke uh, one high-speed steel drill bit, trying to do the tap drill for the 256 holes that we have to put in there. And, you know, went through a couple of 1 8 end mills and I think another 3 32nd end mill working on profiling and just trying to put together the recipe into this titanium. So clearly I was just pushing it a little too fast in the beginning with those speeds and feeds. Very happy with how we ended up with the recipe on this and I think we've got a, uh, a good path forward. I haven't machined that much titanium even manually, only done a, a few different pieces over the years. So trying to take that into 3D machining CNC, eh, pretty good learning curve, but you know, breaking three or four tool bits, that's about $30, $40 worth of uh, tool bits that we broke. So I would say that's not too bad of a price to pay on the learning curve as we're figuring out this Tormach 1100MX and some 3D machining. Really happy with how that part turned out. And I hope you will join me on the journey as we continue on and get through all the rest of the parts for this knife and get one of these complete. So for those of you already subscribed to the channel, you're definitely gonna get the alert when that next video comes out. If you're new to the channel, want to see more videos on knife making, machining, just everything else we've got going on here in the Blades to Be shop, I appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and make sure you get alerted when that next video comes out as well. Until then, I hope you're out in your own shop, working on some projects of your own, making some chips of your own. We're going to be here in the Blades to Be shop working on some more knife parts and we'll be working to get that next video out for you. Until then, take care.